order at 5.03, as we have 10 folks here, uh, and 11.12, Owen and Aiden are here as well. Just saw you pop in, uh, and some uh, visitors. Are uh, there any am amendments to this agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move right into um, the discussion of uh, the budget. And I'm not sure if Ben or Sherry wants to, to begin. With Sherry, the you want to tee it up? Sure, absolutely. So in the last weeks, um, there's been lots of energy at the State House regarding the impact of Act 127 um, and the many interpretations and implications. And some of it was based on conjecture. Finally, after Jim Fenn sent a very purposeful email, um, they did uh, survey all the business managers to see how many people were taking advantage of um, the five to 10% cap, whether they had an increase in the ADM count or a decrease in the ADM. And so based on that survey data, it was established that about $100 million was going to need to be added to the education fund. And the treasurer felt that they could come up with, uh, they would need to raise an additional 40 million and that they could um, fill within the other 60 million. And so right now, uh, yesterday I met with the myself and other trustee, uh, other superintendents, met with the uh, chair of the Ways and Means, the chair, house chair of the education committee. They're looking at three different scenarios, um, but they're most concerned whether or not uh, school districts budgets will pass. And so the third scenario that they feel most likely is that they will, and again, I met for another three hour meeting this morning with superintendents, trustees, that they will look at the six districts that have the um, least to gain from the new ADM. Most of them are in Chittenden County, which is an issue. Um, and that those six districts would have a cent uh, taken off of their tax rate uh, starting at an X amount and then slowly decreasing over the five years. And so, and having conversations with Ben and Carrie and Jim Fenn, thinking that our uh, benefit of this 5% cap was very small and it was designated to a very specific project. So bringing back to you, the board, how you'd like to move forward. Again, there is no definitive that it will be repealed. There's no definitive what actions are going to be taking taking but based on the amount of energy at the um, at the state house right now uh, felt that it was important to bring back our budget to the board for consideration. It needs to happen. This vote has to happen today so that it can be posted before February 4th. And so that's why we're in the position we are to meet on a Friday evening at 5.06. Um, so what I can do is uh, show Jim Fenn and I stacked hands today, and I can show the new town tax rates. Um, we'll pick up where we left off on January 8th, where we um, set them when we had the 5% cap of Act 127. The interesting thing, you all may recall that the, uh, the yield number from the state was incredibly low, the one that came out in the December 1st letter. It was in the 9,400 range. And uh, even with the new pupil weighting, that, that was going to force everybody into that 5% cap. Um, the, apparently the AOE, or I don't know what authority, has communicated a new yield number that's far more reasonable. Essentially, um, it will result in a, in a tax uh, rate increase for our district, not subject to the 5% cap, but uh, let me see, it would be not much more than that, 6.39%. Uh, uh, so another 1.39%. And that'll take, let me just, hold on. Uh, Raina, do I have the ability to share my screen? I would love to put this up. Yes, I made you a co-host. You're all set. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So let me, let me pull this up. Mm -hmm. So this is where we left off in... Uh, on January 8, with it, is that a, a full screen or is that the, the weird screen? Sorry, it's the weird screen. We, we, yeah, it's the weird screen. We can see your notes and stuff. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. Uh, do that. 
Okay, how's that look? Better? Yes. Yes. Okay. This was with the application of the 5% cap and that what I referred to as the tanked yield amount. And so you can see that our equalized tax rate was at $1.5984. Uh, um, with the new yield of 10250 and removing the $750,000 for prepayment of debt, uh, we move into a, an equalized tax rate of 16196 and the town tax rates you see there on the bottom row. So you can see they move about, about a percentage and a half at the town level. So this is what's um, the new, and uh, Raina, maybe I'll stop sharing. Can you pull up the new uh, warning um, language with the new amount that we have? We have it ready. Yep. Then while she's doing that, can you just um, quickly repeat what was the shift in the equalized tax rate from where we had it to this version? Sure, let me, sorry, let me put it back up for you, Karen. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. I have to stop sharing so you can share. Yeah, sure. So there we go. We oops, sorry. We go from a dollar five nine eight four is the equalized uh, that we had voted on on January 8th to a dollar six one nine six. Figure it. I guess that's what is that two cents? I might for yeah two just over two cents on the equalized. Thank you. And that gives us a a, a percentage that's in the you know I guess it depends on the town level right so about one and a half in Reading Woodstock you're looking at. Uh, 24 three yeah about one and a half percent for most towns not a huge shift uh and you know it was uh the 750 we know what that was that was something of an opportunity but um you know we'll back that out and go about our business all right let me sh stop my share so as I understand it, um, from both Jim, Ben, and Sherry, the $750,000 we were going to pay down in debt, we would remove that from the budget, and then the new amount that Raina has put together would be what we actually vote on. That's right. Just, just to confirm, it's not exactly 750 It's a little bit less, but yes, we're going back to the original proposal. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, other questions from the board? I, I guess the qu one question I have is that, it, what's the state's thinking, given that some towns have probably already published their or warned their meetings with amounts uh, that the taxpayers are gonna pay? I mean, they're, what, they're telling just going to people... ch change the law and make it retroactive or something. Bob, they're telling people that you can they're going to pass legislation that you can move out your vote date. They say they're going to give money for a new printing of paperwork. There's lots of us. I like to say magical thinking around what's going to happen. Um, you're absolutely right. There are districts we have already passed our RIF time so we have to notify the we have to notify the union if we're cutting the position that's already gone behind us that was february 1st so huge implications do they know what they're thinking i don't think so this this for the record i mean this would be the first time i think it's just been quite a while maybe it was even act 46 but where you know most of the state had to hold new votes or or make last minute changes it's just an awkward position to be in uh, Josh. So 
So I'm just looking at the percentages on towns, and it, it really looks like it impacts and Plymouth extremely hard in comparison. Looking at those percentages, they were almost 30%. I mean, I know they were going to be 29 some odd percent, but now we're talking 30, over 30. That's a really tough sell. It's a 1.5% increase across the board for everyone. I mean, Woodstock's looking at a over 25%. Um, this is state level. I mean, this is not, whether it's a hard sell or not, it's 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 state level being issued down to us, <laughs> um, really. I mean, that's my two cents. Sorry, I should have raised my hand. Uh, Bryce? Yeah, I was just going to kind of echo that. But I think that the hard thing is, is, is the CLA, right? We battle with this every year every couple of years depending on your town and where property values are at and what's going on and unfortunately all we can control is that that first number that that ben was just speaking to you know it's the only thing we can do there can be years where we've actually seen uh reductions where we've tried to be really fiscally responsible but certain towns got hit really hard with double digit increases even though our budget actually um went up you know so modestly from the previous year we tried to keep it about flat once a few years ago but there's still some towns that saw a 15 percent increase um you know so just just perspective you know to, to sam's point that the cla and um you know there's certain factors that are just completely out of our control and i guess i'll just uh you know applaud the finance committee and jim and you know for getting us to a point where i feel like it the, what, the piece we have control over feels pretty good to me. Uh, uh, Sam and then Sherry. Sorry, I should have uh, raised my hand to begin with. Um, yeah, so as as Bryce said, you know, the CLA is really, um, that took a, that was a big pill for me to swallow when I first started on uh, the school board, learning how, how little control over how taxes get raised uh, that we have on this level. And uh, the CLA really has a, a huge control over it. Um, and, you know, the houses are selling at a crazy rate. I mean, there's just nothing we can, there's no way on a school board level we can, you know, change that um, or the CLA. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, I was on the board like Bryce talked about when we used to try to keep it like, you know, neutral and really not um, uh, try and like keep budget as low as possible. And when we did that, on the flip side, you had people and family, family and parents and community members in our meetings every, you know, week being, you know, uh, we, we should have funding for a Spanish teacher. We should have funding, like, you know, there were, we the emotional you know distress that the students were in because we didn't have proper you know scooting counselors i mean the things that we have the control of to keep the to significantly decrease the budget directly impacts our students right so the ways that we can do that that's the flip side okay so that's that's the flip side also you know as you see seeing in the list of how people are saying that the, you know, the, the building's neglected, which we know isn't accurate, isn't true. It's just old, but um, you know, that's the, that's the other side of it. The things, the ways that we have to like significantly decrease the budget to do that tax rate is taking teachers away from students is, you know, not doing the maintenance we are doing on the schools. It's not, I mean, there's just, it's a no win situation. <laughs> But it is, besides for making sure that the education and the building that we do have is in the best shape that we can do for our students and community. You know, that's that's where we're at. That's my two cents, at least. Uh, Josh, you have your hand up. No, I was just saying, I, I totally understand that the, the CLA is the, is the cause of this, but it's... We're also asking for a building. Like, I want us to be forward thinking about this. I'm just saying I understand the, the situation, but we have a lot of stuff that we're asking for. And I just, 
think 30% is going to be kind of hard for us to sell and the school. And, you know, the members, people of Woodstock are going to have to pay for a new um, sewer treatment plant and the aqueduct. And I, I just, we're asking for a lot and I don't think we're going to get everything we're asking for. So I'm just trying to say we should, you know, really put our priorities and try to figure out what we can do here to sell everything and get, get something rather than trying to sell it all and get nothing. That's just what I was trying to point out. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Anna? Yeah, um, so if I remember correctly, we had put the 750,000 in there because we had this buffer zone of the 5% cap that we could sort of fill in. Um, and I think that, um, you know, maybe in the long run, it would save us money to keep that 750 in there. Um, just because of interest rates. Um, but I'm hearing what Josh is saying, and I think that um, in good faith of the role we're supposed to play in looking up for our taxpayer dollars, um, it seems like if there's a risk that this cap is going to be removed from us um, and we need to make the decision tonight, I'm leaning towards at least removing that 750. Again, it was extra that we'd put in to, to pay that bond vote down. Um, but I think that our voters would really appreciate us, you know, doing what we can without removing teachers and programming and all that. Um, the 750, again, paying down the ballot, uh, paying down the bond is, um, would be prudent in the long run. But I think during this particular year where we're also asking for a new building at the middle school, high school, um, I think our, our, our best move forward is, is to take the 750 out or the small amount just under 750. Um, to show good faith to our voters and um, our taxpayers and also um you know sorry there's lots of commotion going on at the house right now um uh really really show us being financially fiscal or as fiscal as we can without removing um more important or integral parts to our system mm -hmm. okay thank you anybody else have a comment or a question Further discussion? All right, are we ready to um, make a motion? I move uh, to take that 750 out per um, Anna, per discussion um, that Anna um, brought up. Um, or maybe you wanna move the, uh, the new- Article uh, six. Article six. Oh, okay. Uh, I make a motion to move article six. And I will second that. And I would also request that Jim Fenn and Ben give us their uh, ex expert opinion as well. All right, so we have a motion. Um, Jim and Ben, would you like to speak to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of uh, described it already. I guess just from this discussion that's uh, just happened, we don't know what's going to happen with Act 127 this year. There's a chance that the 5% cap could still hold. And if that does happen, then we'll um, fall back to the tax rates that we um, had authorized in uh, in January, on January 8th. But if it doesn't, then uh, we don't we don't fall you know, it's interesting, fall up right to uh, to like something that'd be closer to 10%. And, um, you know, we're uh, at that 6.39% increase versus five, right? So I think that's, those are the two scenarios that can play out with this, with this motion. Can I just clarify? So if we follow act, or the motion that's on the table, remove the 750 ish dollars from the budget and the cap is removed, we're actually going to see a larger increase in taxes. It'll be 6.39% versus 5%, correct? Because the cap would not apply. We were, you might recall that we were um, going to be um, going close to a 10% increase with the, with the 750. And that was because that was that dead band I described that you have a 5% cap as long as you don't exceed 10. But if they take those, that 5% cap away, then we would be exposed to that full amount. That's the value of the taking out the 750. So if the cap remains, we're at the dollar fifty nine. It doesn't matter which budget you bring forward. If the cap's removed, we're at a dollar sixty one point nine or a dollar seventy something. 
And that's the difference. And I see that, oh, hold on. I see that iPhone 13 Pro Max has their hand up, but I need you to identify yourself before I can. It's Jim Half, Carrie. Oh, Jim. Okay. Well, right now we're still board members only, so we'd have to wait to public comment. So then can you, Jim and Ben, can you clarify, please, if we keep the currently approved budget with the 750 in it, what would that look like with the cap on and with the cap removed? Yeah, with, yes, yeah, sorry. So that would be I didn't run the the tax rates. They'd be higher than anything you've seen. Um, but let me just tell you what it would be. And Jim, if you have it, feel free to go. But uh, the, the equalized, excuse me, the equalized without the cap is a dollar eighty or a dollar seventy nine point something, and with the cap, it's a dollar fifty nine. It doesn't matter which budget you bring forward. So on a percentage basis. It would be a, a 9.65% increase on it versus the 6.39% increase. Uh, yeah, this is a tough decision, y'all. I'm glad y'all are on the team with me because it sounds like if we move forward with the current budget and the cap is removed, our taxes are going to be higher than any other option. If the cap stays on, it doesn't matter whether we keep the 750 or not, it's going to be the same tax rate. But if the cap is removed and we've also removed the 750, then we're going to reach that lowest option. But we have no control over whether that cap is staying on or not. Is that all correct? That's that, true. That's true. And, and Anna, you were correct um, in a statement you made a little earlier that we it was really financially behooved us to have the 750 and pay down the debt and all that because long term that was smart. Um, short term, it may be fatal if the cap's removed. And I think that that's what we're looking at. You think they're going to remove the cap? I have no idea what they're thinking today. Yeah. yeah I can't the two imagine unknowns that. are whether they remove the cap and where they'll set the yield. But what they what we've gotten is a, a yield value to make revised budgets off of. So if that's a little bit, a little bit tricky, a lot of moving pieces, but this is our best information on a very limited amount of time. Uh, Josh and then Bob. Oh, it, it sounds like we basically have zero choice in this situation. I just don't understand how like we went up by seven hundred fifty thousand plus equal to cap to come down to five percent. If we don't spend it, we're at six point three percent. If we don't spend anything, we're or change any. Like if if we change it, we can go up to nine percent. I'm just kind of like confused on how we fix this. I, I don't know what you're gonna say to the community to be like. It's okay that we're gonna that your taxes are going to go up by this much potentially uh, it just doesn't make sense to me i i don't know really what to say to you to, to this but it just doesn't make sense well it's because the government has is pulling some strings around and they aren't being clear about what they're actually going to do so we want to we don't want to risk a 9.6 percent increase if they remove the cap therefore the best option to be fiscally responsible is to remove that and then have a six per, six point whatever it is increase versus the five percent we were going to have because of the cap. Um, Bob. Yeah, I think knowing what we know today, uh, the prudent thing to do is is to uh, uh, vote for this. Article six, the way it is, there, there's absolutely no question that it, it makes no sense to take the risk, knowing what we know today. If they end up rewriting the law and and keeping the cap, we can always call another special meeting. We can have another um, special town meetings. We can put the 750 back in there and get the townspeople to vote for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Corinne.
Yeah, I just wanted to, I guess I'm just going to reiterate um, what the last couple speakers have said. I think that the the budget, <clears throat> um, not taking the risk that the, that the increase will be 9% is super important to um, uh, kind of making sure that we can at least have a chance of passing this budget. And I, and I think the five versus the 6% uh, increase um, are fairly, are, you know, fairly responsible. There's usually some increase and the, you know, the, the biggest impact of the CLA, which is all over the place and changes every year is not under our control. And it is hard to explain that to taxpayers sometimes, but a lot of people get it. But as far as putting forward a budget that is responsible to them and you know what we need to run um, the district well, um, I think the this new Article 6 is the way to go. Any other board members? All right, shall we, um, I think we probably have to vote by roll call. Is that correct, Reina? Uh, roll call if anybody votes no. Okay. So you would need to unmute yourselves because I can't see everybody unless, um, well, I guess we, yeah, we leave the article up for now. Um, okay. All in favor of passing this budget, please say aye. 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 Anyone who's opposed needs to unmute and say so. I'm going to oppose, but it's not because I don't think we're doing the right thing. I just don't know how we're going to sell it to the voters. Okay, then I have to do a roll call. Um, Corinne? Aye. Bryce? Aye. Ben? Aye. Bob? Aye. Did I miss anybody in between here? Hold on. Uh, uh, Elliot? Aye. Sam? Aye. Anna? Aye. John? John, are you uh, yes, sir? OK, can't hear you, but I think you're saying yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, did I miss anybody? Yeah, you missed me. Uh, okay. And I'm, an, I'm in favor. Aye. Okay. And um, uh, Katie? I don't know if she's there. Lydia? Aye. Okay. Um, okay. So just making sure I got everybody. Um, okay, I think I did get everybody. Um, at this time, I will open. Here, hang up. on, no, uh, apologize. I I see that we've missed we've we've missed an item of business. I should have brought this up in amendments to the agenda, but I'd like to propose an amendment to the agenda. Okay. And I'd like to move that we add to the agenda as the next order of business: discuss and adopt new school bond article. Okay. Um. Had we not done that, Ben? No, this is this these. Um, if I can get a second, I can I can explain. We can discuss. Second. Thanks, Anna. So okay. um, the, the there were references to Act One Twenty Seven in the school bond article in terms of the funding, and if that goes away, it won't be accurate. So this uh, revisions to the article were um, required to um, account for that possibility. So the current um, the current language is is what we have. But so this is just a motion to talk about it. Um, so I think we'd need a, a, a vote on that. To open the discussion? To put it on the agenda. Yeah, this is an amendment to the agenda. OK. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. All right, we can discuss. Okay, so maybe I'll make a motion to adopt Article 7, and then we can discuss. I second. Okay, discuss. All right, as I said, the prior version had references to um, Act 127. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to uh, correct the um, the warnings provided to our 
voters uh, because of the volatility around Act 127. So the new language has been revised to remove those references. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? I have a question um, in, can I have the yep, floor? Go ahead, Anna, and then <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> uh, uh, in discussions about Act 127 and its uh, changing dynamic, have they talked at all about changing the student weight? That's Sherry away in there. She's been part of the discussion. Uh, no, there's been no change. There have been conversations around changing the algorithm of the three scenarios they gave us yesterday. None of them talked about changing the algorithm. Received. Thank you. Bryce? I just wanted to know if uh, one of two things, if anybody's interested enough, but is, I just wanted the verification that nothing material has changed in this. It's just the references to that. And if there is anything material, if we could pull up like a you know, redlined copy, but if, if not, I'm not too, too worried about it. It doesn't appear that there's anything. Yeah, I can speak to that, Bryce. I would answer that question. No, we had in the prior version required language. Uh, repeated twice the state statute around um, it's a there's a this language starting with the word state on the second line of the second paragraph so state funds running all the way to let's see so I'll just read the part that's that's mandatory and mandatory to be in bold in the warning or in the article it's state funds may not be available at the time this project is otherwise eligible to receive state school construction aid the district is responsible for all costs incurred in connection with any borrowing by the district for the project in anticipation of state school construction aid. The statute says that language has to be in the article, in the warning, and in bold in both places. So previously we did that, but then the language that was surrounding it, we um, put in another version of that in another paragraph. So we essentially repeated the required language, and that seemed uh, potentially confusing. So this latest version um, eliminates that uh, redundancy. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, seeing and hearing none, um, are we ready for a vote? Looks like we are. All those in favor of approving Article 7 as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Um, at this time, then, I will open the floor for public comment. Jim? Hey, Carrie. Hey, Ben. When you go back to your screen that you put the 1.6196, 1, 1, 1. Can you please adjust everybody's tax rates by the CLA? You still have the tax rate as if it was 1.59. So each town will have a different tax rate. So instead of Killington being 303, it probably works out to be about 309. Woodstock will go up too. So if you can just change the bottom line. Yeah. We'll change the percentage everyone was talking about. Hey, Jim, are you able to see the screen? I see the screen now. Okay, this is the prior version. Right. This is what we authorized on, in January. And this right. version, I think, is what you're asking for. And this is what we just authorized. But you're still, so you're showing 1.6196 with a 0.5235 CLA for Killington. 0.52. There's a CLA, 0.5235, correct? Yeah, so divide 1.6196 and divide it by 0.5235. Oh, I see. You're saying that the FY25, yeah, you're right. The FY25 Homestead Property Tax Rate It is... should be 309 for Killington and change, right? You're right. You're right. And yep. it should be across the board for everybody. You're right. stock should be 2 point whatever, 2.54, 2.55. Yep. Which will then will change the percentage that you're going up. Let me see. Hang on, let me do this real quick. Let me come off my screen here. And and then while you're making that change there, 
you know, to the rest of the board members, yeah, it's very confusing budgets for schools. But if you take $25 million for the current budget that we're in, and you're now raising it to $29 million, the budget increased 14%. You're seeing a 6-point-something percent increase in the base tax rate only because of the new weighted student count. Your budget went up 14%, folks, $25 million to $29 million. Remember that. Mm -hmm. right. But if you're going to put it out to a vote and you're going to put this data sheet out there, please just correct and include the CLA for each town. And that's it for me. Let's see. Yeah, if you guys want to bear with me here, this will just take me about three minutes. All right. Are, are there any other uh, members of the public who would like to speak? Okay, let's see. You're right, let's see. You understand what I'm saying, right, Ben? I do, the percentage won't change but the numbers on that row will change that was just a cut and paste omission you're right the rates will change if your percentage doesn't change i don't understand what you're saying there last year yeah, the only paying dollars, yeah, actually, here, let me just let me do this here this will be easier instead of cut and paste i'll just show you the the spreadsheet i'm working off of it's not as pretty but it has the information i just uh, want to make sure you understand what i'm saying and then it just confuses me when you have a new build vote that you're also doing, but you've made presentations and saying that there's going to be a three to three and a half percent increase in the budgets going forward. But you just now had a 14 percent increase in your budget. So don't know how you're going to hold to the three percent. Don't know how you're going to hold to the 16 percent without firing people, because like Sam said, there's nothing else you can cut. So that's it. Here, let me say, I really need the school stay, but I think can you, you see my crazy. screen, Jim? Yep. Okay, here's the 309 you were asking for, and you'll see the dollar right. 61 drives that 309, but it doesn't change right. the 2519. What I'd done for the slide is I I'd copied over the top row and the bottom row, and I had failed to copy over the new rates. Okay, so you already changed the bottom, you just didn't change the rate. That's right. You changed the, you changed the percentage. That's right. My eyes just went to the first three on three line items, Ben. Yeah, and that's my bad. My apologies. No problem. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, hearing no further public comment, are there any further comments from the board before we close the meeting? Okay. I'll be happy to have a motion to adjourn. So, second. Okay. Did you get those, Raina? <laughs> I did. If uh, people could make arrangements with me to come in and sign the new signature page for the new warning, that would be awesome. Thanks. When do we have to do that by? If we could get it done within the next couple of days, that would be great. I'm going to send the amendments off to the towns um, because I don't generally include the signature page for the town reports and stuff. So, um, but if I could have it within, even if I have to drive to you, that's fine. Thank you. 